Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about a recent interview with Colin Trevorrow, where the writer and director goes over how he is approaching the next Jurassic World movie, and why this film will not only be the conclusion of his recent trilogy, but also in how it is intended to circle back around to earlier movies like Jurassic Park 3 and The Lost World. <laughs> So this is something that I've been waiting to hear about for a while now because with the revelation that Lewis Dodson and Biosyn would be returning to the Jurassic Park franchise for the first time since 1993 and the addition of Ian Malcolm, Alan Grant, and Ellie Sattler in starring roles, I knew that this would probably get brought up sometime down the line. The following information comes directly from an Entertainment Weekly article that Colin Trevorrow did on Camp Cretaceous. However, when asked about how the filmmaker was approaching his work on Dominion, this is what he had to say. To me, Dominion is a culmination of one story that's been told. When you got to the end of the Jurassic Park trilogy, it may not have been as clear in what the complete story of those three movies was because they were a bit more episodic in the way that they were approached. But this trilogy is not that way. It's very much a serialized story. What was important for me was when you watch Dominion, you really feel like you're learning how much of a story that first set of movies was, and how everything that happened in those movies actually informs what ultimately is able to happen in this. If kids who are born today are going to be presented with six Jurassic Park movies, you hope the parents will buy them the box set, and you hope they are going to get to feel like they watch one long story. Now, the reason I think his words right here are so important is because if you go back to The Lost World and to Jurassic Park 3, it becomes incredibly clear that in a marathon of those films, that they were absolutely not planned. At least not planned out as in one continuous story with evolving characters and a thematic through line or even a finite ending. And you can see this very clearly in how those sequels approached world building in their respective entries. In the second movie, we get this big revelation that Isla Sorna is a thing, which basically decanonized the legitimacy of Isla Nublar being the sole place where dinosaurs were cloned and housed, which was what was set up in the first movie. When they were making Jurassic Park, there was no Isla Sorna. The characters also received a notable shift in focus with Alan Grant no longer being the focal point of the movie's theme themes and messages. And this happened when they put Ian Malcolm in the driver's seat for The Lost World. Jurassic Park 3 similarly changed up the lore with the introduction of what was only referred to as Engine's List and the subsequent mysterious introduction of a Spinosaurus, which for some reason wasn't in The Lost World, even though it was set on the same island. So this caused a lot of confusion amongst audiences for years, and when they once again shifted focus from Ian Malcolm back onto Alan Grant, only this time taking away his earned loving of children and loving the idea of life finding a way with the whole breeding and parenting subplots of the first movie, it basically boiled the original trilogy down to three totally separate films that weren't really much of a trilogy at all. Now, what Colin Trevorrow has said here is that, quote, what is important to him is that when you watch Dominion, you really feel like you are learning how much of a story that first set of movies was and how everything that happened in those movies actually informs what ultimately is able to happen in this. So he's putting a pretty direct emphasis on how the importance of what happened and went down in JP3 and The Lost World will and should make a difference in playing to the plot and character work of Dominion, which is something that I think is incredibly important for any IP that is trying to franchise out. When you go back and look at other franchises that have failed to plan out an ending or really just kind of flown by the seat of their pants as far as what the series is actually about, you run into a lot of series that inevitably run out of steam or need some sort of revitalization. When I think of the original Jurassic Park franchise that I grew up on and its monetary and critical decline, I don't really associate it with the original Star Wars trilogy or the prequel trilogy, but oddly enough, I gotta be honest, it does remind me of the newer sequel trilogy. You've got Jurassic Park, which was this massively popular movie that made loads of money. Then you've got The Lost World, which some people loved, like me, but then you had other people that just absolutely hated it. And then you had the last one that tried to bring things back to being somewhat similar to the first film with Alan Grant, but in the end it wound up being the least well-received both critically and commercially. And that in a nutshell really was what happened to that first set of movies. To build on top of something that we recently heard where Colin Trevorrow was going 
going out of his way to make sure that the cast of the movie contributed to their characters in ways that felt genuine and true to who they were as people. Sam Neill has recently come out and elaborated on how some of that stuff went down. And oddly enough, he singles out Jeff Goldblum as being someone who was constantly on his toes, making sure that the Ian Malcolm character was on point. In a recent interview, Sam Neill says, quote, Colin Trevorrow is a lovely guy and a really good director. He was very open to suggestions. Jeff would come to work with about 50 suggestions that drive us crazy every day, God bless him. I love Jeff, but boy does he have a lot of ideas. Laura and I would come up with things as well, and Colin was very open to that. We'll see how many of those things make it into the cut. Now, straight away, I want to mention something about Jeff Goldblum and the original Jurassic Park. The man knows what to do to make Ian Malcolm a likable and fun character. Originally, while they were filming the 1993 film, this is a true story, Jeff Goldblum was actually just supposed to run away before getting attacked by the T-Rex, just like what happens in Michael Crichton's book. But on the set of the movie, Goldblum actually pulled Spielberg to the side and said he thought the character should actually have a moment of heroism during all of this chaos where two little kids were about to be killed by a giant dinosaur. So he decided to write himself into the scene in a way where he would actually ignite the second flare and lead the Rex away from the road so Grant could save the kids. Had he not have made that suggestion and had the movie not have been changed, both his character and the rest of the film would have been looked at in a bit of a different light, let alone the lost world. Now, if there's one thing that people have shouted to the heavens about on YouTube for several years now, it's that the most important thing in movies is story, and characters. Story and character. You've heard people scream that in other people's faces for over a decade now, and it's something that I will say the actual original JP trilogy, that set of movies, kind of lacked in terms of an overall arc and a narrative for these people to go about and develop on. The original Jurassic Park, JP1, of course, that doesn't have that problem, and that's because it's a movie that tells its beginning, middle, and end in a very concise and precise manner. But now with Colin Trevorrow deciding to work at making both the second and third films relevant to not only his new movies, but also the original movie now with Lewis Dodson and the shady company that hired Nedry back in 1993 returning, I think everything I'm hearing from the production of Jurassic World Dominion just sounds very, very cool in my honest opinion. Colin Trevorrow stated that he hopes that when parents buy their children the quote, box set, including all six movies in the franchise, that these films get looked at as chapters of one long, continuous story. And to do that, they will need to connect the dots from The Lost World and JP3 in a way that both works for those films, but also in a way that makes Dominion relevant to them as well. They also need to make sure that the characters are totally respected and totally developing and actually being in relevant roles for this film that tie back into the older ones. So it's a big challenge, but after reading his Duel of the Fates script and comparing that to The Rise of Skywalker, this has had me intrigued for like over a year now. And it's one of the main reasons that I'm personally so excited to see what he does with this film. Anyways, guys, those are all just my own thoughts on the subject matter. Now, what do all of you think? What are your own thoughts and opinions on these interviews and what the cast and crew have said recently? They've been teasing that embryo box that says Isla Sorna. We know there's dinosaurs all over the place. We've heard about the lunch scene several times from JP1 and how it's relevant to Ian Malcolm, Alan Grant, and Ellie Sattler in how they're getting tied back into this film. I've given my thoughts, but hey, whatever your own opinions and ideas happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video, and hope you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.